Imagine one day, you wake up with a pain at the back of your eye. No, it's not the normal dry eyes that you feel, it's not the normal red eyes. It's an undescribable pain that you feel that is not too right. You decide to go see a doctor. You book the appointment in the clinic. When you arrive at the clinic, the nurses ask you a lot of questions about your family history, about your medical condition, and they brought you to different rooms. The first room, you got to a machine where you have to put your chin and your rest forward and your forehead forward, and they take a picture of your retina, a big flash that comes into it. The second room, they put some eye drops into your eye to dilate the pupil and some air puff to get your eye pressure. The third room, another machine, big, this time, bigger than the one that you saw earlier, chin and forehead forward, there's another flash that came into your eye and you feel rather uncomfortable. So by the time you get ready in front of a doctor's room, you knock the door, open up, set yourself down, you saw the name card of the doctor, it's an associate professor. You know you're in good hands. He flips through the report to look at what the nurses have done and he has a frown on his face. You got worried. The first question he asked you is this. He said, hey, is your loved one with you today? He got scared. He said, no, I, I came alone. May I know what's happening? He said, listen, I've got bad news for you. Your vision, just like the pixelation on a TV screen, from the corner of the TV, you're going to start losing these pixels. About two weeks, you're going to lose about 30%, and the next two weeks, the next 30%, and all you have left is just a tunnel vision right in the middle. Nothing else on the side. Some of the things that you like to do, you know, whether is it watching a video on the phone, whether is it bringing your children down to the park and play, taking a little walk around your neighborhood, you might not be able to do so. Don't talk about going to work. Because even walking around your own home, your family, your dependents must start to take care of you. you know, I'm sorry to inform you, but in a month's time or so, you will go blind. You will go blind. These are the four hardest words that I have to tell my patients sometime because I'm an optometrist and we diagnose eye conditions before working with eye doctors to manage all these conditions. The pixelation coming down, tunnel vision, it's a real eye condition called glaucoma. And it's being brought about by an even more common eye condition that most Singaporeans have. Wearing a pair of glasses because of short-sightedness, myopia. Look at this. You see a whole bunch of students wearing glasses. Let me give you some numbers, some statistics. Seven years old, at P1, in the year 2018, 18% of the students need to wear glasses due to myopia. At seven years old, 18%. When they reach P6, 65%. And at 18 years old, when they reach tertiary level, almost 80% need glasses. And you know, Singapore, we try to be number one in everything. <laughs> Even myopia, we also mean number one. You want to be the best airport, you know? You want to have the best passport, but number one also, myopia. And I wonder why we are striving. Don't clap your hands, it's not a good news anyway. Okay? <laughs> 77% and 49% have 
high myopia. Okay, let's study why myopia takes place, shall we? Let's define myopia. I want you to really understand. I'm going to sound like your physics teacher in school, all right? Whatever that you, I say that you really understand, not your head, so that I know you are with me. Because after the buffet outside and when you close your eyes, I don't know where you go, okay? <laughs> so light, for us to be able to see clearly, it has to reach the retina, all right? But as we mature as we age, our eyeball length will change, and instead of falling on the retina, it's falling too short. That's why it's called short-sighted, and that's what myopia really is. Okay, if you can recall your primary school friend, I'm very sure got this guy, this girl, right? The one with a thousand degree, the minus 10 there up there, you know, when they wear their glasses, their eye look very small, right? And if you can recall looking at the side of the glasses, that thousand degree fella, very thick lens, very heavy, very thick lens. Look, their eye very beamy. Why? Uh? Why is that so? Because they've got really long eyeball, they need a really thick lens to bend it all the way to the back. That's why they need such a thick lens. So just to make sure that you are really listening, I need you to fill in the blank. It's a test, yeah? When you are short-sighted, your eyeball is too... Long. One more time, you can do better. When you're short-sighted, your eyeball is too? Long. Very good, thank you. Okay, let's study the factors attributing to myopia. There are five factors. Why myopia takes place? Why? First one, age. From 7 to 16, it's very common that parents bring children into my practice and their power keeps increasing. Right? Every year, it's go up, it goes up by 75 and 100 degrees. Age, why? 7 to 16, as they are growing taller, their eyeball gets longer. That's how it is like. Number two, Asian ethnicity. All right, East Asians, especially Chinese, we are more prone to myopia. That's how it is like. Number three, genetics. When I mean genetics, I'm talking about your parents. If one parent is myopic, you've got three times the chance of being myopic as well. If two parents myopic, six times the chance. It's like buying tikam and lucky joy, you confirm tilt one, you know, when you have two parents. <laughs> oh, tilt, by the way, my foreign friends means kena. I mean, sorry, <laughs> kena, by the way, means <laughs> you'll get it. It's, it's a very Singaporean problem, <laughs> okay? Genetics. So if mommy is 700 degrees or minus 7 diopter, daddy is minus 8, chances are the child will also be a high myopia. Fourth, digital device. You know, they have the most innovative way. If you go to the mall, you see parents pushing their baby slowly. Parents have the most fantastic way to key up something in front of the baby shoulder. And what is that? An iPad, right? Two years old, baby shoulder right in front of them, the digital device. And what, what is the song that is usually played? Baby shaka doo 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 doo, right? The song gets stuck in your head, right? And you know, all the children. If your nephew, your niece, the two year old, three year old toddler, if they can function and operate your OS better than you, you gotta start scratching your head and ask yourself why. Last but not least, education level in developed countries, Japan, Korea, Singapore. As the countries are more developed, education level is high, the demand for close work and reading. It's also going to be there. You know, tuition, enrichment class, CCAs, homework. That's how myopia progress. Should you be worried if this is truly happening? I want you, at this time, picture this. If I have a rubber sheet over here, and I pull this rubber, does the rubber become thicker or thinner? Thinner. When your myopia gets higher, when you're short-sighted, your degree goes up, you also get a longer eye. I urge you to change the lens at which you look at what myopia really is. Because the story doesn't end at wearing a pair of glasses. It's truly an elongation of the eyeball. And what is the effect? Cataract. 
if your degree is minus three, minus six, or above 600, five times the chance of you getting cataract. Glaucoma, 14 times if your power is more than minus six. Retinal detachment, think of it like a wallpaper coming down from a wall. If you don't paste it back right away, the whole wallpaper is going to come down, the whole retina is going to detach, and you're going to lose your vision permanently. Macular degeneration, 41 times. I want you to not just look at the number. The scarier part of the equation is the multiplier. It's not a percentage higher. It's a multiplier. So what can we do? There are three persons who is going to help you take care of your eyes and your vision. The first being an optician. They are the expert in fitting, grinding, and dispensing your glasses. All right, so you can get a good pair of glasses. They can check your power to see what's your degree like. The second O in the whole three O equation is the ophthalmologist. Right, the eye doctors who are trained in medical school for eight years and five years specializing just in eye to take care of things like cataract removal surgery and LASIK. The third O is me. I'm an optometrist. As an optometrist, as a primary eye care professional, we are the first line of defense to diagnose all the eye conditions that I just mentioned. Glaucoma, cataract, retinal detachment, macular degeneration. As a primary care consultant, if you have a little bit of rash, you don't go see a skin specialist, you don't go to the dermatologist right away, right? You normally visit your family physician at your neighborhood, get some ointment, make sure that the rash goes away, right? So if you want some screening, any preventive screening, you visit an optometrist because we are trained to be able to do that. We are like the eye GP before we work with the tertiary eye care, the treatment doctors to take care of your eye and your condition. So now, many people ask me, he said, hey, Ken, you know, you, you have many experience. I want to ask you about all these shops that you see in the mall that can deliver, deliver your glasses in 20 minutes, right? They can get your glasses done, done very, very fast, very, very well valued. Are they good? Well, I say, of course they are good, right? It gives you so much convenience, right? It's very regularly priced. I'm not arguing about the professionalism or the quality of the glasses. I'm arguing the fact that people need to know the difference between an eye power check and an eye health examination. An eye power check lets you determine what's your degree that you need to see 6-6 six, six and clearly. An eye health examination is one that we can look at the different structures of your eye, from the cornea to the cataract lens, to the, crisp, to the retina. We need to know that to make sure that your eyes are healthy. So it's two different tests that you need to go for, not just one. I'm going to share three tips for you to make sure that you can get away with some actionable steps. The first, screen time equals outdoor time. You know, I got two boys, Johnny and Ada. They love their iPhone. They love their iPad, but they don't know anything about eye care. You know, I get very frustrated, right? <laughs> Go keep myopia away. Go outdoors and play. Have you guys heard about that before? HPB, Health Promotion Board, right? So why is that so? There is a very famous medical literature studying Australian students and Singapore students. They found out that the Australian students actually read more than Singaporean students, but yet, the Singapore students' myopia rates are much faster and higher than the Australian counterparts. And the difference is that in activity, the Australian students are often outdoors. So they found out that one hour every day all right, can at least keep the progression of myopia at a slower rate. So that's the first one. Plan more family outdoor time. Second point, 20, 20, 20. This combination of numbers can really save your life. Every 20 minutes on a computer, 
Look far away, 20 feet. 20 feet is about 6 meters, right? For 20 seconds. Just 20 seconds. That's all I'm asking for. Okay? Just 20 seconds. It's going to save a lot of your vision issues. And lastly, no phone one hour before you sleep. You know, when I flashed this side, I heard some people laughing and giggling. Okay? I was being challenged myself. You know, my mentor asked me, he said, Ken, when you put this slide up, are you really walking your talk? I put up a challenge to it. I said, okay, let's do it. All right? And I successfully do it about 80, 90% of the time. I'm not perfect. Okay, what I do is that I have to leave my phone outside the room. And that forbids me to actually use my phone before I go to bed. So this is another quick tip. Actionable? Can it be done? Yes. Alright? So if you can remember what the title of this event is, it's about idea and inspiration. Right? I hope this sharing can inspire you to visit your optometrist. All right? Whether you stay in Jurong, whether you stay in Potong Passe or Tampines, visit your optometrist for a routine eye check and to take care of the myopia issue. You know, Singapore, because of the high statistics, it's gonna, myopia is going to be a public health issue and I want everybody to hashtag better myopia with me. Thank you.